Hello. This is part two of this series that it is always God's will to heal. I am breaking this down to where it is undisputable. If you have not listened to part one, do so. Thou, thou be in the info section, the information card. So watch it. If you did not listen to the introduction, God is sovereign, but not always in control, do so. Thank you for landing on my channel. For the best teachings in divine healing and divine health, click on the subscribe button. Hit the bell so you will be notified when I post new content every single week, every single Wednesday, right at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hi, my name is Tony Myers. I was healed from Lou Gehrig's disease. My testimony has been featured on the 700 Club. I am the author of five books on divine healing. I've guided thousands to be able to acknowledge their full healing. And you can be next with just a few tweaks in your perception. You, yes, you who has the same spirit of faith I have, you can be healed. It's always God's will to heal. And there are so many ways to prove this. It's essential. This is foundational. Because in order to be healed and have your healing, you must know the answer that it is his will to heal you. Because if not, then you're double-minded, which means you're back and forth. Jesus stated, when you pray, believing that you have received, ye have it. How can you believe that you have received unless you know that it is the Father's will and Jesus fulfilled the Father's will at the cross and resurrection? How can you believe this unless you know that it is his will? Asking him, is it your will to heal me? Is a question of unbelief. A prayer that is, Lord, if you're willing. Last week, I answered that question. So make sure you check out that video. Know his will for yourself. We are none is with an excuse. We have no excuses. It's in the scriptures. Undoubtedly, undeniably. 
in any pastor, as sincere as they may be, that teaches otherwise is ignoring the little things, how can you trust him with the bigger things? Because this is foundational and it is crystal clear. So if a leader or a pastor gets this wrong, then what do they have right? Because this, te this, the wrong teaching leads people to die and to not have a long and fulfilling life that God wants for them. Which is why I am pounding this all out so that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt in spite of other people's circumstances, in spite of what other people teach, you know the truth. Now go out and spread it. Send these videos to your pastor, to your bishop, to anyone, to your elders, anyone that does not know the truth. All right, so first of all, we're going to cover, and this all goes with the atonement, the atonement is the promises of God that were fulfilled. But first, we're going to start out with the word salvation. The early church understood the full meaning of the word salvation. It did not just pertain to heaven. It is not only spiritual salvation as is taught. It includes healing. That little word salvation in the Greek is sozo. Sozo meant the full package. To be healed, saved, delivered, set free, made whole. Now, when we accept Christ as Lord, Master, and Brother, then our spirit is reborn. Did you get that? Our spirit is reborn. Our spirit is saved and is created because Jesus' righteousness and the Holy Spirit resides in our spirit. Therefore, we are saved. We are reborn in spirit. We are reborn. Now we are sons and daughters, children of the living God. The early church knew this. That is why, upon being washed clean and reborn by water baptism and the filling of the Holy Spirit and physical healing happened all at the same time in the early church because they understood that it was the full package. 
we do not. So we are going to talk about the atonement. And once again, as I stated before, in the last teaching, I stated, and in this case, people would just say, oh, physical healing isn't in the atonement. That's just salvation, which I just covered. The word sozo, healed, saved, delivered, set free, made whole. We are reborn in the spirit. Therefore, it's the full package. But we are taught in the church, spiritual things are separate from the physical things. So therefore, we think salvation only means going to heaven. No. The complete package was given to us through the atonement through the cross and his resurrection. Those who teach otherwise can only use human experience and try to disprove this. They can only point to other human beings and say, see, they didn't get healed, so it isn't God's will. We have to know what God's will is and then believe God's will in order for it to happen. So we cannot point to someone else that did not get healed. Okay. Now, one other thing. On this earthly life, you cannot separate the spiritual things of God from the physical world. Because the physical world was framed by the spiritual world. If you separate the spiritual world from the physical world, the physical world does not exist. That is why there is none that has an excuse. Because the very earth itself proves that God exists and then that he is the living God, the Father who heals. Before we start talking about the atonement, I want to talk I want to speak on how it is so much error to go by our human experience to believe the things of God. Have you experienced heaven in your physical body? No. Not the way most people view heaven. You haven't. So, if you haven't experienced that, how can you believe it? So, if you're pointing to other people's experiences or to your own experience for healing, and that is the only way you'll believe God wants everyone healed, then how can you believe heaven exists if you're going only by experience, by the human experience? 
And notice I said, in the body, while you're here physically, because, yes, there are those who experience being in heaven as an outer body experience. We're going to set that aside for a moment. And I'm speaking directly to the human experience. Have you experienced heaven? The answer is no. Therefore, if you believe in salvation, you haven't seen it, yet you believe it. So, it is God's will for all to be healed. And it's foolhardy to dismiss that it is God's will based upon personal experience alone. Because if you do that, what about a heaven experience? If you can't believe in something that happens in this physical world that you haven't experienced but can, then how, how in the world are you going to believe you're going to heaven? Now, see, with children of Israel, they had the opposite problem. They could believe in physical healing. They had seen it. They could believe in the miraculous. Their problem was be believing the full package of salvation of after you die. Now, let's go to the atonement. Isaiah 53. 4 through 6. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Let's take a look at that. That is Isaiah 53, 4. So he's borne our sickness, our griefs and carried our sorrows. First, the word griefs. In the Hebrew, is Charlie, C-H-O-L-I-Y, which literally means malady, sickness, anxiety, calamity, and disease. It's a strong concordance number, H-2483. So surely he has borne our maladies, our sickness, our anxiety, our calamity, and disease. That is the way this verse should read to be crystal clear. Sorrows. The word sorrows is macabre. It's H4341. And literally means both physical and mental anguish. Jesus, therefore, bore our maladies, our sicknesses, our anxiety, our calamities, and diseases. And he carried both our mental anguish 
and physical pain. Which is why the Passion Translation, much more accurate translation for this verse. And here it is. Yet he was the one who carried our sicknesses and endured the torment of our sufferings. We viewed him as one who was being punished for something he himself had done as one who was struck down by God and brought low. But it was because... Okay, so... Therefore, he did carry our physical pains. In which this shows that physical healing is included in the atonement. And that's just... The first part. That's just verse 4 of what is included in the atonement. Okay? That is just verse 4. Now, here's a Passion Translation. But it was because of our rebellious deeds that he was pierced, and because of our sins that he was crushed. He endured the punishment that made us completely whole, and in his wounding we found our healing. Now, Once again, the Passion Translation is more accurate. It was by his wounds we found his healing. Where was he first wounded? In the Garden of Gethsemane, when his capillaries burst. And then you had with the soldiers who roughed him up, then all the way to the cross, So, Isaiah 53, 5 shows he bore all these things. So, we don't have to. Now, this can leave zero doubt that at the cross, Jesus attained both our spiritual and physical healing. It was the cross in which he fulfilled these things so that now we are reborn as he was resurrected, as he was reborn, we are reborn because of his righteousness. And this is when we believe that. So the Heavenly Father cannot say no to something he has already stamped his approval on. God sent forth his word, who was Jesus. His word shall not return unto him void, but shall accomplish everything which he set him to do. That is what he was sent to do, Isaiah 53, 4 and 5. He accomplished it. So therefore, it was fulfilled, which means now it is available to those who believe. Let's go to 1 Peter 2.24. Once again, opponents will say, Oh, this don't apply to physical healing. This only applies to salvation, to going to heaven. I've already shown the error of that. But let's go with it. Who his own self... 
bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness, by whose stripes ye were healed. Now, there are those who will say this only applies to spiritual healing. Oh, you'll be healed when you die. This is not true. The Greek word, and that's G2390. Is and I know I'm gonna print, mispronounce it. Ye ha om ahi, which means to cure and to make whole. That's physical healing. He himself carried his sins. This is the Passion translation. He himself carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we should be dead to sin and live for righteousness. Our instant healing flowed from his woundings. Now, from Isaiah 53, 5, Isaiah was fulfilled. Where is that fulfillment at? And that will be found, Matthew 8, 16 through 17. That evening the people brought to him many who were demonized. And by Jesus only speaking a word of healing over them, they were totally set free from their torment. And everyone who was sick received their healing. In doing this, Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. He put upon himself our weaknesses and he carried away our diseases and made us well. In that scripture, one, it says it was fulfilled. When something is fulfilled, that means it is now available to everyone. Jesus fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. He put upon himself our weaknesses and carried away our diseases and made us well. Once it's fulfilled, it's available to all. This shows that the atonement included physical healing. Without, there's no doubt at all. Not only you have Isaiah 53, 4 through 5, in which the correct translation clearly shows it, and then you have the fulfillment of it with Matthew 8, 16 through 17, where he 100% healed them physically. This was not just a spiritual healing, which, once again, back in Isaiah, it shows that it is both. So, there's absolutely no doubt that at the cross, Jesus bore everything. He's bore our transgressions, our diseases. Every single thing that was fulfilled, Scripture shows us it was fulfilled. Therefore, the promise is for our physical healing while on this earth. And then there's a couple more verses that proves that. 
And one of those is, is that as he is, so are we in this world. Jesus is completely healthy now. Jesus is completely righteous. Jesus is all of that. And we can have the same thing on this earthly world. There is absolutely no doubt. As he is, so are we in this world now. When we believe it. Only believe that. No, it is the Father's will. He has already put his stamp of approval. All you need to know is to believe that. Wrap your heart with the truth, not unbelief. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Be healed and be a blessing. Check out the description section. You will find my website. You will find my Amazon author's page in which you can purchase my books that show you everything from A to Z about healing. Become a channel member for a minimal fee three or four bucks, you receive perks. Behind the scenes stuff, extra teachings, all that. So check out the description section. Be blessed, be healed, be a blessing.